It's 4.30 on WKYT This Morning. Lexington police say one man has died after a crash near the Fayette Clark County line. We'll have a closer look at the investigation ahead this morning. It's a busy time of year for everyone, including the Wolf County Search and Rescue Team. They've been practicing their skills to better save lives. And the Scott County High School Band is home safe after a hectic weekend in New York City. You'll hear from students about what happened on that trip ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Hope you had a nice weekend. The first one of April and you're refreshed and ready to go on a Monday. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain. Thanks so much for joining us. And it looks like this weather is still up and down, up and down. Really? I mean, uh, you know, th this morning not quite so cold. Sounds like tomorrow will be. Meteorologist Micah Harris is in our First Alert Weather Center. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, we have the clouds starting to race overhead, especially from the northern zones. Because of some rain, we have a few showers left over from this front. Now, the front's going to be making its way through as we go through the day. The best chance of rain really comes later on this afternoon, and that's still at about 40%. Temperatures are in the 40s and 50s this morning. It's not a bad feel outside, and those winds are gusty out of the south and southwest. A nice one, though, as we travel off into the afternoon with a few showers. We'll talk about this forecast coming up. We'll see you then. Thank you, Micah. In the news, Lexington police say one man has died in a crash. The Fayette County coroner says a driver lost control on Athens Boonesboro Road near the Clark County line late last night. Emergency crews rushed the driver to UK Hospital. The passengers died at the scene. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has the latest on the investigation. Investigators are piecing together what exactly caused this deadly crash out here on Athens Boonesboro. The coroner saying he believes. Speed is to blame. The single vehicle crashed closing the roadway near the Clark County line for several hours as the collision reconstruction unit starts their investigation into the crash that happened just before 7 o'clock Sunday evening. The coroner pronouncing one man believed to be the passenger dead at the scene. Coroner Gary Ginn says that man was outside of the vehicle when a passerby first came up on the crash. Meanwhile, he says the driver was taken to UK hospital. While an official cause has not been determined, speed is believed to have played a role. I was traveling at a fairly high rate of speed. Um, the brush that's there and there's gouge marks where this vehicle is flipped several different times. So uh, uh, it's just a misfortune that, um, that this has happened. Now at this point, no word on if the driver will face any charges. Police say that is up to the collision reconstruction unit to decide. In Fayette County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. The coroner has not released the name of the man killed. Deputies in Mercer County have arrested the driver accused of hitting and killing a woman. Deputies arrested Matthew Warner in connection with that hit and run. Deputies say Heather Lawrence died when she was crossing US 127 near Highway 1160. Her husband told us that Lawrence had just left their house after an argument. And when he went to find her, she was spotted lying there in the road. Have you ever done this? It needs to go to jail. They took my wife away and they took my kid's mother away. They didn't even slow down. They didn't even try to stop. There's no skid marks over there. I mean, what kind of animal does this? How can you live with yourself? Investigators found the truck involved. The sheriff says the owner reported it stolen around 9 o'clock yesterday morning. Warner is in the Boyle County Detention Center. Two people are at UK Hospital with serious injuries after a crash on Versailles Road. Police say the two were trying to cross the road near Keeneland early yesterday morning when a driver hit them. Emergency crews rushed the woman to UK Hospital with life-threatening injuries. The woman is also seriously hurt. We do not know their names at this time. State police in Adair County found a body in the ruins of a townhome. Troopers say there was a fire on Watson Road in Columbia Saturday. Yesterday, the owner of the home went inside and found a body. That body is now at the state medical examiner's office. Troopers do not know who the person is or how they died. Deputies in southern Kentucky are still trying to figure out what led up to a shooting. This Clay County Sheriff says someone found a man in a car on North 66 near Big Creek yesterday. State police believe someone shot that man. Crews rushed him to UK Hospital for treatment. Deputies do not know who shot him, and we do not know how he's doing at this time. 
When the weather warms up, many hikers head off to the Red River Gorge. Last year, search and rescue crews dealt with dozens of rescues there. They also unfortunately handled three body recoveries at a popular spot, Chimney Rock. This weekend, crews were out there practicing rescues and recoveries. WKYT's Caitlin Center talked to the team. It's getting to be the time of year search and rescue teams frequent state parks. If it's at Chimney Rock, uh, there's only been one survivor there. The fall there is 200 feet, and just last year there were three fatalities. Wolf County Search and Rescue spent its weekend training, figuring out the quickest way to get to a fall victim at the Red River Gorge. The chimney top, there's railing just like this that's out there, but what happens, people cross over that railing and then they try to jump over the crack and that's when they get in trouble. Wolf County Search and Rescue just recommends that if you're going to be out hiking, spend 20 minutes or so researching the area and getting to know it. John May recommends hikers bring a whistle, some cordage, and water. Also saying a map and compass will be your biggest asset. Used to, the old timers would tell you they would go to a creek, follow the creek to a river, river takes you out to safety. Nowadays, with the young folks coming up that are going in the backwoods, they think get up high for cell phone signal. Just this weekend, five University of Kentucky students were lost at the gorge, but crews were able to locate them through a program called Your Location. They had cell service enough where we could send them that, and it's actually a link. I did it for my home computer. I sent them this link. Um, they replied on the text message that they received. It sent their UTM coordinates back to me. May says as a precaution, always tell someone where you're hiking and about how long you should be on that trail so that person knows to check in with you. In Wolf County, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Wolf County responded to around 60 rescues last year. The widow of a fallen Jessamine County paramedic says an act with his name attached to it will help a lot of families. On Friday, Governor Matt Bevin signed the John Mackey Memorial Act into law. That bill calls for families of fallen paramedics to receive $80,000 in death benefits and free tuition at state universities and community colleges. John Mackey died in November while he was working and a car hit him. At the time of his death, EMS workers killed while on duty did not receive death benefits. Under this new law, all state, uh, these uh, local EMS workers and volunteers killed after November 1st of 2015 are eligible for benefits. Standard car wreck. The police get dispatched, the fire gets dispatched, and we get dispatched. We're all standing right there together in the same place at the same time. And it, it's been a long time coming that they finally get recognized as doing the same things. The John Mackey Memorial Act will go into effect in July. Families say the body of a Lexington native and her husband killed in Brussels are back in the United States. Stephanie and Justin Schultz were among the more than 30 killed in the Belgian capital last month. Families say the bodies were at Dover Air Force Base last week and they were expected back in Lexington last night. Both families plan to meet with a funeral home today in Lexington to make final decisions about a service. There is already a service planned for April 10th in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Well, it was not the way they thought their trip to New York City would end. Police had to clear out thousands of people from Times Square Saturday night because of a suspicious truck. And in the middle of that commotion were 200 people with a Scott County band. The band had just played at the Statue of Liberty earlier in the day, and they were ending their trip with some sightseeing. Band members say they were about to take a group photo when police started evacuating the area. We were about to take our group pictures and everything. Then uh, the police came and I thought that it was just going to be where they were going to reserve and keep everybody else from coming in, but then they started shouting, move as fast as you can. The band got the bus after the incident. They got on the bus and they took their group photo at the Lincoln Center. Parents and students say the police handled the situation well. It was really affirming in some ways because uh, to see the way that the NYPD reacted and how prepared they were and I really have to give credit to the school band directors because they were just right on it and very calm. Um, I was a little bit worried but I wasn't that concerned because of how orderly everything had like the orderly manner that the situation had been dealt with. Police say they found wires on the front seat of the truck and a gas can in the cab. The bomb squad determined there was no threat. The Scott County band returned home yesterday afternoon.
Good that everybody was safe. Yeah, it's what scary as a young kid to yeah. be out there involved in that. Yeah. The time this morning is 440. It's 20 to 405. Early on your Monday, let's make the best of this Monday <laughs> and get it underway. Make it better by clearing clutter. And Moms Every Day share some wisdom on how to do just that. Ahead on WKYT This Morning. We have a front just to the north of us, and what's going to happen? That slides on in, brings us that chance of rain, and back behind that, that's the big talker. That's your freeze warning. I'll have that coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. A few light showers to the far northern half, and it's slowly but surely making its way south and southeast. This isn't a big system, it's not a very potent system. Uh, the, the main thing out of this is not so much the showers, which we will get showers today. Already seeing that Mount Olivet and back toward Barrie, Corinth, Gratz, Owenton, Monterey as you travel up 127. And, and those are areas that continue to see a few sprinkles, a couple of light showers, Williamstown as you make your way through Grant County. But all that slowly but surely making its way south and southeast. Highway 62 through Cynthiana, you'll be seeing this here in just about 30 to 45 minutes. And, and, and it continues to make its way southbound, and not only that, but it will bring more rain along with that as we travel through your afternoon. Temperatures are there in the 50s. It's actually a really nice feel outside. Those winds gusty out of the south and southeast. And what's going to happen? We get into the afternoon. We'll be in the low to mid 60s. Not a bad feeling day, but it's not the best looking day. A few showers later on this afternoon, too. Off into the evening, it really does fade away as we travel off through the night. But once that fades away, once it finally pushes through, Look what happens. 27 degrees tomorrow morning. I mean, a big shot of cold air slides right back in here. And that's why we have that freeze warning. And that's going to be in effect through tomorrow morning around 9 a.m. And that goes for virtually everybody, as you see across the area. Down toward the far south and southwest, just know you guys are going to be right along that 32 degree reading. But the farther north, and back toward the northeast that you go, better likelihood of actually getting below that 32 degree reading. So let's go through the breakdown. What we can expect the next few days. Freeze warning, that's the big talker overnight and into tomorrow morning. Storms on Wednesday, no severe weather threat out of this, but it does look like we'll get some showers and thunderstorms moving on in. And then we started bringing some colder air in on Thursday. That'll give us a chance of rain. And then, yeah, look toward Friday morning. Possible snow on Friday morning. As of right now, I don't see much of any issue out of this, but this could be a light snowmaker for some isolated spots. Got to be watching this on Friday to see how the models react to this as we get a little bit closer because it's still a little bit late off into the season. But you know what? Uh, it, we've had later snowstorms, that is for sure. So here's your seven day forecast, and that just happens to be the first day of Keeneland. The opening day is on Friday, and you know what? We could see some flakes in the forecast. It's going to be a big talker as we slide off towards your weekend. The weekend looks much better, 50s and 60s, and it will be absolutely packed out there. But, yeah, that opening day is going to be interesting, guys. The next four to five days, obviously up and down, but it, it goes way down, and then it goes up, and then it goes way down again. I mean, you're talking about multiple freeze issues. Yeah. Throughout the next week. So just wait on planning, hold off. We still have another two to three weeks before we actually uh, should be able to do that. Yeah, How rare is snow in April? Yeah, it's, it's pretty rare, yeah. but like I said, we've had it. You've been here multiple times. <laughs> we've multiple had it at the Derby in yeah. May. So. Yeah, I was about yeah, to say, in May is the, is the latest we've yeah, had snow. Can right? happen. All right, Micah, thank you. It's going to be an interesting week. Our time is 446. Many of you may be ready to start your spring cleaning. And out with the old, in with the new, right? Yeah, maybe you just want to spruce up your home. We'll take a look at how the feng shui can help in today's Mom's Everyday Minute. Feng shui is an ancient Chinese art that calls for arranging a space in a way where energy can flow freely. Whether you believe in the philosophy or not, this is a good time of year for spring cleaning. Here are some areas to clear clutter, courtesy of tarot.com. Start with technology and delete old emails or voicemails. If you're hanging on to sentimental text messages, print them or store on a hard drive. Have loose photographs all over the house? Put them into a photo album or frame ones that are really special. Next, move into the kitchen and clear out your cabinets. Throw away things that are outdated. Give away items you no longer want. Now we'll move into the bathroom. Again, discard any old medications or beauty products that are collecting dust. Finally, empty coat pockets, wallets, book bags, and purses. When you clear the clutter, you make room for wonderful things to come into your home and life. 
For more ways to make mom's life easier, visit MomsEveryDay.com. For these tips and more, just go to WKYT.com and click on Moms Every Day. And there you'll find all the latest news and the weather forecast that will keep updated through this, uh, as Micah says, up and down week. With the Snow for Keeneland. I can't get over it. Uh, wild. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the latest CBS Battleground Tracker poll shows a close race on both sides in tomorrow's Wisconsin primary. We're covering the campaign ahead. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome back in. Our time is 4.51, making the best of a Monday morning on WKYT. And the latest CBS Battleground Tracker poll shows a close race on both sides in tomorrow's Wisconsin primary. But in that poll, both frontrunners are trailing. Brian Webb takes a look at the numbers. At a campaign rally in West Allis, Wisconsin, Donald Trump said it's time for John Kasich to get out of his way. You shouldn't be littering up the process because that's what he's doing. It's really a disgrace, I'll tell you. Kasich tweeted, that's not how our republic works, Donald. We'll keep fighting until someone reaches a majority of delegates. Looking at the promise. Ted Cruz made several stops in Wisconsin Sunday, insisting he's the Republicans' best shot at winning the White House. Nominating Donald Trump would be a train wreck. And that's not fair to train wrecks. A CBS News battleground tracker poll shows Ted Cruz six points ahead of Trump in Wisconsin, with John Kasich far behind. The same poll shows Bernie Sanders two points ahead of Hillary Clinton. If we do not allow the Trumps of the world to divide us up, the truth is there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. Clinton spent the day campaigning in New York ahead of the state's April 19th primary. Brian Webb for CBS News. Polls show Donald Trump holds commanding leads in New York and Pennsylvania. Their primaries are later this month. A federal investigation is underway after a deadly Amtrak wreck near Philadelphia. A train carrying more than 300 passengers derailed after hitting a piece of heavy construction equipment on the tracks yesterday morning. Two Amtrak workers died and more than 30 passengers went to hospitals. Crews recovered the data recorder and video from that train. State police are asking the public for information about the deaths of two people in Lawrence County. Troopers found 79-year-old Lois Garten and 52-year-old Michael Garten dead inside a home in Blaine Saturday. Troopers say someone had stolen Lois Garten's car. Police in Columbus, Ohio, arrested a relative of Garten's yesterday. 47-year-old Stanley Webb, Jr., is accused of stealing the car. Police won't say if he is connected to the murders. A woman in Pike County is facing a DUI charge after deputies found her passed out in a car in a grocery store parking lot. A witness says Donna Lips had been staying in her car at the Pond Creek grocery store parking lot. Deputies say at one point she stumbled out of her car and used the bathroom outside. The Pike County jailer found her unresponsive. 4.53 now is the time on your Monday morning. Good to have you along. And coming up next, a look at some of the stories that our news team is working on for you this morning. And we'll have another look at your morning forecast coming up. Good morning. We're just about to hit 4.57 here, bright and early on your Monday. Can you believe it? 4.57. <laughs> now it's time to take a look at some of the stories we're working on this morning. It's always early, right? <laughs> we are following a story this morning out of Mercer County. Deputies there have arrested the driver accused of hitting and killing a woman. We'll have more details on the investigation coming up in this next hour of WKYT This Morning. Talked about it's not uh, bitterly cold this morning. It was yesterday, and it sounds like it will be again tomorrow. I know, and then we're talking about snow. What in the world is going on out there, Micah? I mean, that's just the way it goes here in Kentucky, right? It's that time of year, Mark. March into April, it just gets that way. And that's what we're going to be rolling through. Not just the next couple of days, but the next week, maybe even two weeks. I'm just not seeing a change in this pattern. You look at northbound, though, we have a few sprinkles, a couple light showers. That is a front that's going to be pushing on through. We're talking 50s this morning, 60s by the afternoon, but it's overnight and into tomorrow morning. We're going to be seeing that freeze warning. We're going to go over that and show you those numbers coming up with another two hours of WKYT News. We'll see you back here in a couple of minutes.